YouTube and what is up? Uh, it's your boy Sigma here back with another video. We're gonna make this one pretty quick. What we're talking about today is the new Sergey OS for the Mark III. I did make an installation video, but his instructions are pretty clear. But I can put that out for you guys if you've been having an issue. So if you have any issues with the install or you just wanna see the process, let me know down below and I'll throw that video out for you guys. But for today, what we're gonna go over is what you kinda wanna know, which is the features. What does it do? Is it worth being up front? Sergo S is not free. Talked about that in the last video. For the Mark III, it's the same thing. The $100. That gets you access to it. He takes you all the way through the instructions. And from there, you will have free updates for life. So any updates that come out to it, you do get access to those. Now, what's new about it? Let's go ahead and start. First, you get this nice little, uh, little home screen here. I honestly love it so much that if you look here, I've actually made my favorite button, Car Web Guru, so I can still access this and my shortcuts and all. But my main setup on my home button is this one. I'm leaving it as that just because I like kind of rolling around with that. You get a new set up down here. This is the Land Cruiser theme. It's become my favorite, especially with the UI for this, because with that, you have the ability to have this little Q50 down here. And when you turn on your AC and everything, it listed all here. You can adjust the temperature on both sides as per usual. Nothing changes as far as the controls, uh, but the difference is everything you can see is pretty workable. And I like the fact that uh, the direction you have it going in actually shows on the inside of the car on like a little cabin there. That's just pretty cool to me. Um, but that being said, moving on to some additional features. Now, it has some of the basic things you're gonna love live wallpaper support all the themes are unlocked so you have access to those all automatic you get this nice little uh model up here but you've also got the uh the gyroscope for the car so let's just i'll show you the full thing later but just to open it up you get your gyroscope here for your vehicle so you've got a side view and the back view of the q50 the q50 itself is right there so you can do that he does send you the images for it so if you're handy with Photoshop, feel free to hop in and edit the images to match your color or match however you want it to look. Uh, but that being said, moving on to some of the other features. The cruiser theme is the one we're talking about. That's what I'm going with. Uh, the one that looks, you know, about like this. It's kind of my favorite at the moment. It's also got true randomizing in the music now. But you won't hear a repeat track until it's played over at least half of what you have present in that playlist. So that's useful for people who are still using the stock music app. Now that we've handled the basics, let me get into some of the stuff that I love the most, what to me makes it worth it complete, but let's get started with that. Now, I want you guys to check a couple of things out. So we're gonna hop into our settings here. And one issue that I had from a lot of people that they told me about is when they went to their setting and tried to change, let's say the theme. But when you tap it here, the gyroscope's still in the way. He actually made it to where the apps in the top, you can double or single tap them. But if you double tap them or basically just tap again, if it's already open, you get the full screen mode, that goes away. So now you've got full screen settings, all that good stuff. Nowhere isn't that from. But moving on, there's a couple of settings that I want you to pay attention to because there's one I love especially. And uh, you guys may not be into it as much as I am, but to me, I would have bought it just for this. You've got a hide top and bottom panel option. So what does that mean for you? That means you turn these two on, the top and bottom panels disappear and you have a complete full screen option. So if I were gonna stick with Car Rip Guru, I would definitely do this because of course you can access everything there, but it is completely full screen at that point. All right, so as you can see, full screen opens up all sorts of options. And just as an example, let's check out the map. So take a look and that's what you get a full screen, I think it's like, this unit is what, like 13.1 inches, something like that, but a massive map right there in your dashboard. And again, it's the Mark III unit. Everything looks OEM, that's all good to go, excuse the mess over there. But yeah, you've got a complete full screen option. And again, should you want, you can always pull up the menu that way, if you choose to go permanently with the full screen option. Now, if you have Car Web Guru set up under your favorite, like I do, and you can even pull up this kind of maneuver where you have your top screen be the map or some other application, your bottom screen will form a more condensed version of the Car Web Guru, so you still have access to your shortcuts to kind of pick what you want. So that's absolutely an option that you can do. Now, those are some of the best features of the new OS. Of course, on top of that, there is Sergey's accessibility that is a huge plus. You can usually always get in contact with them, get this whole thing started, 
There is the community, which is a huge help. A lot of people over a lot of different platforms have this, not just you. So you are able to rely on them to get a lot of things done. The system moves a lot faster than the OS that you get out of the box. And you get, of course, these really nice customization options. I can't help but love that down there. Eventually, I'm going to try out my hand at Photoshop and see if I can actually customize an image of my car down there. But I'm, I'm not that good at it right now. So that's not something I'm going to try at the moment. All right. So next, I'm going to give you a basic overview overview of how the installation process goes. Again, I do have a detailed video that I made up of everything, so if you need it, let me know. But for right now, I just want to give you the basics so you know what to expect because the instructions he gives you are very detailed. So what you're going to do first is the pre-setup. For the pre-setup, you're going to take a couple, an update file that he sends. You're going to use an application that he'll give you access to, and that application will be here. When you go to it, make sure that you use the 1920 by 1080 and then you'll hit install. This is after you've put the USB in, of course. It'll do its thing. It'll spit out a file, an MCU file uh, for you. He'll tell you where to locate it. You'll throw that on the USB and then send that to him. Once he's verified everything there, he's going to send you back an MCU file, tell you where to put it and how to deal with that. So after you've got everything updated, he's going to send you to a certain area to look for a code. That's a that's actually going to be this screen. You'll see it here and you'll long press on it. It'll pop up a keypad. You'll go through the numbers, hit OK. That will spit out a file for you to actually send to him. I'll tell you where it's located so you can send it. That's the end of your preliminary steps. The next step will be getting everything good to go. He'll send you another MCU file back. You'll use that MCU file to load onto your screen. Once that portion is done, you'll check your music app because the music app will not work, but it should once this is all finished and you do the secondary code he sends you. To let you know, this is where I ran into a little bit of trouble. So a couple things so that you don't run into the same issues that I did. Your multimedia default music player app can't be anything else. So if it is, you'll want to change it back to the default music player that everything started with. You can change it right back after everything's updated, but for that time, do that. If you are doing that and you're still getting an error when you try to upload, you need to reboot your unit. Do the hard reset where you hold the home button for about 12 to 15 seconds. The system will shut down, restart, and once it restarts with this default music player selected, try it again, it should go through. Once you've got your music player working, from there it's a simple update just like you would normally do on the unit. You'll plug up the USB with only that update on it, It'll take through the process, update the unit, and presto, you'll have your new thing here. So, that's the basic steps. But with that, you'll gain all these features, all this new functionality, the ability to full screen if you choose to, and just a faster, more responsive, and to me, better looking system than you get out of the box. Now, like I said, people ask me for my recommendation. Is this worth it? Is this something I want to go with? To me, it is an absolute must on these units. Just the way that it looks alone makes this completely worthwhile for me. And you can customize all of this to, you know, look how you want it to look to make things better for you. But it is an absolute go in my book, 100%. Now, if you have any questions about this, feel free to drop them in the comment section below. Leave me a like on this video so hopefully more people can see it. Of course, subscribe. We definitely want to keep you guys in tune. Uh, I want you guys to see the next video. In the next video, I'm going to go over all of the themes that are available and what they look like so you guys can take a look at them, see what works for you, see if it's for you. Vinny Sigma here. Thank you guys so much for rocking with me. And as always, ride easy.